Okay, welcome back. This is teacher Francis. Last time we stopped about energy flow in an ecosystem. We talked about in an ecosystem, the sun is the main natural source of energy. Then from the sun, then the energy flows to other living organisms. And we said there are different feeding levels. There are different feeding levels or trophic levels. Feeding levels or trophic levels in an ecosystem. We said one is producers, and the green plants are called primary producers. They are, all, they are the ones which trap light energy from the sun to make food in the process of photosynthesis. Then after producers, we have consumers. Then we said we have different categories of consumers. We have primary consumers, secondary consumers, tertiary consumers, and quaternary consumers. And lastly, we said we have decomposers. Decomposers, we said the majority they are the bacteria and the fungi. We discussed that the role of bacteria or the role of decomposers, which are the bacteria and the fungi in an ecosystem. We said we have beneficial roles and harmful roles. The beneficial roles, we said, this treatment of sewage, making of uh, curing tea and tobacco. We talked also symbiotic bacteria in ruminants and rodent secret cellulose enzymes that digest cellulose. The harmful effects, we said, some bacteria, they cause diseases and they cause food poisoning, the bacteria and the fungi. Then after that, now we are supposed to proceed to food chains. Food chains, still we are talking now energy flow in an ecosystem. Food chain, what is a food chain? It is a linear representation of energy flow from producers to other organisms in an ecosystem to other organisms in the ecosystem. In the ecosystem. Remember, you remember what is an ecosystem, those terms. A food chain is a linear representation of energy flow from producers to other organisms in the ecosystem. The energy flow is the linear representation of energy flow in, from producers to other organisms in the ecosystem. How is energy flowing from the producer? And we say the producers can be green plants. Then green plants are called the primary producers. Or it is a food chain represents the flow of energy linearly from producers to other organisms. It represents energy flow linearly, linearly from producers to other organisms in an ecosystem. It's the same, same definition. It is a linear. Linear means in a straight line. The energy flow is flowing from producers to other organisms in an ecosystem. And remember those other organisms in an ecosystem, those other organisms in an ecosystem, we say they are called consumers. So if we have, we have producers, the producers, then we have consumers, consumers, then the consumers, we have decomposers. We have decomposers. So what is showing how energy is flowing from producer to consumer to decomposers is what we call a food chain. When constructing food chains, one thing you should keep in mind, the decomposers are normally placed last. They're the ones which are placed last at the end of the food chain. They're the ones which are placed last at the end of the food chain. The consumers can be many. Remember we said we have primary consumer, secondary consumer, tertiary consumer, quaternary consumer, then you have what you call the decomposers. The decomposers, which decompose, which feed on when an organism dies. Then an example of a food chain is shown below. For example, green plants, goat, leopard, the arrow, in a food chain, normally shows the direction of energy flow. The direction of energy flow. What you may also say that it points the eater. Because in this case, green plants are being eaten by the goats. Then, the goat is being eaten by the leopard. So the leopard eats goat, goat eats green plants. It is showing that energy is flowing from green plants to goats, from goats to leopard. So, if you are asked, for example, which trophic level which trophic level, which trophic level, 
which trophic level. Trophic level means feeding level. Which feeding level is represented by the goat? In this case, the goat is called primary consumer. Is the one which is eating first these green plants. Then this is the secondary. This is the secondary consumer. If we had another organism, for example, if we had another organism here, then the leopard is being eaten. For example, in Tokyo, we have the vulture. Then the vulture, then in Tokyo, we have the bacteria. So in this case, the green plants are called producers, primary producers, or they are just producers. Then the woods are primary consumers, the leopard are secondary consumers, the vultures are tertiary consumers. Then in this case, if we do not have the bacteria, for example, if we had another organism, for example, say the dog, then you have the bacteria. That's just an example. So, the green plants are primary producer or think they are producers. Goats are primary consumers. Leopards are secondary consumers. Vultures are tertiary consumers. The dog in this case is quaternary or quaternary consumer. The quaternary consumer, this way, the quaternary, the quaternary consumer. Then the bacteria are now called decomposers. When we say the bacteria and the fungi are normally placed at the end of a food chain because they're the final consumer. When an organism dies, is being worked on, then the nutrients are recycled. This one, grass. Remember we said plants are producers in an ecosystem. They're the ones which trap the light energy from the sun to make food substances in the process of photosynthesis. That one you check in my presentation in Form 1. I started that topic, nutrition in plants and animals. So that process of photosynthesis. The grass being eaten by the cow, the cow being eaten by the human. So in this case, the grass is the producer, the cow is the primary consumer. Just don't say consumer, primary consumer. The human being is the secondary consumer. And I'm saying the arrow in a food chain shows the direction of energy flow in the ecosystem. Make sure you follow this very clearly. I'm saying the food chain is a linear representation of energy flow from producer to other organisms in the ecosystem. Or a food chain represents the flow of energy linearly from producers to other organisms in the ecosystem system in the ecosystem we say the ecosystem is a natural unit composed of biotic and abiotic factors whose interactions lead to a self-sustaining system then an example of a food chain i'm saying is shown below we can talk about green plants goats leopard vulture dog bacteria grass cow human then the arrow shows the direction of energy flowing, how energy is flowing from one organism to another. And they said it's linear. You can see it's a straight line, linear. Then the arrow is showing that direction of energy flow. Then you can get some questions like this. What trophic level, or name the trophic level represented? Trophic level, remember I said, is the feeding level. Name the trophic level represented by, for example, the vulture. You just start from the start. Green plants, these are a producer, primary consumer, secondary, so this is primary consumer, secondary consumer, tertiary consumer, this is quaternary consumer, then these are decomposers. Those are decombo, decomposers. So the trophic level occupied or represented by the dog is quaternary consumer. The bacteria, they are decomposers because we said they can be either bacteria or fungi. The bacteria and the fungi, we said they are the decomposers. Then that's all you're supposed to know from the food chain. After food chain, then you allow me lastly to talk about food web. Food web. Food web. Start the food chain, 
We have also food web. The two represent energy flow in an ecosystem. Food webs. Now it is food webs. Food webs. When you talk about a food web, my students, a food web consists of several food chains interlinked. A food web, a food web, food web, a food web represents or consists, consists, consists of several or many, several food chains, food chains interlinked, interlinked, interlinked. Or you can just say a food web, a food web, a food web, our food web is several food webs. You can just say food webs are several, are several interconnecting. There are several interconnecting, there are several interconnecting food chains. There are several interconnecting food chains. This is a food chain, another food chain, another food chain, several interconnecting. That's why I'm saying food web consists of several food chains interlinked. So many food chains make up a food web. Many food chains make up a food web. Then can allow me to have an example, an example of a food web. Example of a food, example of a food web. An example of a food web I can talk about I have moths. I have moths, these insects. Then the moths are being eaten by praying mantis. These are being eaten by praying, the praying, praying mantis, praying mantis. Then the praying mantis are being eaten by snakes. The praying mantis are being eaten by the snakes. Then we have here grass. This grass can be eaten by the moths. The moths are eating the grass. The grass is being eaten by grasshopper. They are being eaten by grasshoppers. The grass can also be eaten by beetles, by beetles, by beetles. The beetles can be eaten by the snake. The grass can also be eaten by the cow. By the cow. The cow can also be eaten by human. They can also be eaten by human. My fellow students, this is an example of a food web. You are seeing there are several interconnecting food chains. There are several interconnecting food chains. These are several interconnecting food chains. You can see grass and the beetles, that is a food chain. A grass can be eaten by cow, cow eaten by human. This is a food. This is also a food what? This is a food chain. This is a food chain. So this is a food chain, a food chain, another food chain. The grasshoppers spring mantis. The praying mantis can also eat the grasshoppers. So this is an example of a food web. It is a web, several interconnecting food chain. This is one food chain, this is another food chain, another food chain, another food chain in an ecosystem. And remember this can exist in an ecosystem. In an ecosystem, it is very rare to find that you are only having a food chain, linear. You must have one organism feeding on many organisms. Or one organism is a source of food to many other organisms. For example, you can find a human being is eating a cow, can feed on a goat, can feed on camel, can feed on green plants, for example, can be feeding on tomatoes, can be feeding on kales, can be feeding on sugarcane. So it's normally food webs do exist in an ecosystem compared to food chains. So several interconnecting food chains make up a food web. They make up a food web. 
allow me to give one question. We discuss one question. We discuss one question which you can maybe encounter in uh, your examination. The question is reading this way. The question is reading this way. The question is reading this way. After understanding that a food web several interconnecting food chains, understand me to ask one question. It's just a study the food web bureau and answer the questions that follow. The question is study study the food web. Study the food web. Study the food web below. Study the food web below and answer the questions that follow. Study the food web below and answer the questions that follow. Study the food web. Study the food web. Study the food web below and answer and answer the questions and answer the questions okay those are the questions and answer the questions that follow and answer the questions that follow Okay, study the food web bureau and answer the questions that follow. And answer the questions that follow. The food web is, we have pigweed. We have this plant called the pigweed. Then the pigweed, we have being eaten by the buffalo, being fed by the buffalo, being eaten by the buffalo. Then the buffalo being eaten by the lion, being eaten by the lion. Then the peewits are also being, but from the peewit we have the grass. The grass being eaten also by the buffalo. The grass also can be eaten by the zebra. The grass can also be eaten by the zebra. Then the zebra is being eaten by the lion. Then the grass can also be eaten by the rabbit. By the rabbit. Then the rabbit is being eaten by the wild dog. The rabbit is being eaten by the wild dog. By the wild dog and the Grass, the zebra can also eat the wild dog. The zebra, the wild dog also being fed by. So we said that in an ecosystem, when constructing this, the arrow, either a food web or a food chain, the arrow shows the direction of, the arrow shows the direction of what? The arrow shows the direction of energy flow. The arrow shows the direction of energy flow. So. The buffalo are eating pigweed. The lion are eating the buffalo. The lion eats zebra. The wild dog eats zebra, feeds on zebra. The wild dog can also feed on the rabbit. The rabbit can also feed on the grass. The zebra can also feed on the grass. So you are seeing these are several interconnecting food chains which are making the food web. So the questions are this. Name the producers. The questions are I'm going to discuss the questions together there. The question is A, name the producers, name the producers, 
Name the producers. Name the producers. In this case, you can see the producer one. The producer one, we have grass. The producer two, you can see we have the peaweed. The pigweed. The pigweed. This pigweed, which is uh, yeah, the pigweed, is a producer. Because you're seeing the pigweed, they're the source of food for the buffaloes. The grass is the source of zebra. The grass is the source of rabbit. The grass is the source of buffalo. And we said most plants are what are referred to as producers. The pigweed is a plant, the grass is a plant. So the producers are two. The second question. Construct a food chain with the wild dog as a secondary consumer. Construct food chain. Construct a food chain. A food chain. Construct a food chain with the wild dog as a secondary consumer. With the wild dog. With the wild dog as secondary with the wild dog as secondary consumer. With the wild dog as secondary consumer. With the wild dog as secondary consumer. Remember, you can make a food chain. So, so many food chains from this food web. Because we said many food chains make a food web. So, in this case, I've been told construct a food chain with the wild dog as secondary consumer. This is the wild dog as secondary consumer. So, if you start from here, this is grass as producer, rabbit as primary consumer, then the wild dog as secondary consumer. Or you can go grass as the producer, then the zebra primary consumer, then the wild dog as secondary consumer. So we can have two food chains in this case. The first one you can just say grass, grass. After grass, we have rabbit. Then we have wild dog. The wild dog. The second one can talk about grass also. Then zebra. Then after the zebra, we have wild dog. The zebra, we have wild dog. Yeah. So this is producer, primary consumer, secondary consumer. And we are told the wild dogs are secondary consumer. This is the grass, you start also. So from here you can see the grass, rampage. So grass is producer, primary consumer, secondary consumer, wild dog. That's what you've been asked. Then the grass, zebra. Then, then the last question, the last question you can get from a food web is state two short term effects on the ecosystem if all lions are removed. State, question three. State the short term effect. State the short term effect. State the short term effect. State the short term effects. The short term effects. If all lions are removed from this ecosystem. The short-term effects, what will happen? What will happen immediately in this food web if all the lions are removed? Remember, you remove the lion. So the lions, in this case, now are like the enemies. They're the ones which are feeding. The lions are feeding buffalo. The lions are feeding zebra, are feeding on. All the lions are eating the buffalo. The lions are eating the zebra. So if you remove the lions, what will happen to this ecosystem? Number one, the buffaloes will increase. Remember now the enemy has gone. The buffaloes will increase. If the buffaloes are going to increase because the what is killing them is not there, what will happen to the big weeds? The big weeds now will have big, so many enemies. So the big weeds will decrease. The big weeds will reduce in number. I'm saying the buffaloes will increase. They will become many. When the buffaloes will become many, the big weeds are going to decrease. They are going to reduce. Then the grass also is going to decrease because you are seeing now the buffaloes are increasing. Also, the number of zebras. When the number of zebras, because also the lion has gone, the number of zebras are going to increase. When the number of zebras are going to increase, you can see also the grass is going to be attacked. The grass is going to be attacked. 
So the short term, you ask two short term effects. Short term effects. The number of buvaros will increase. The number of bigweed will the number of bigweed will decrease and the number of grass will decrease. Then I think for today that is enough. This is enough for today. We have discussed the food chain, the food web, and the associated questions you can get. Those questions, the trophic level occupied by an organism, trophic level is it the feeding level? Is it a consumer, producer, or a decomposer? And such questions related to the a food web, food chain. Thank you so much.